Today we're going to talk about functions. And before we can talk about what a function is, we need to discuss a relation. And as we have written up here on the board, a relation is simply a relationship between two pieces of information. So for example, if I wrote down the numbers 2 and 3, these two numbers are in this set that contain 2 and 3, so they have a relationship with each other. Another relationship might be, another relation might be a uh, relation between uh, a student in your class's uh, student in your class and his age. So relationship simply show, uh, shows a relationship between two pieces of information. Now, what does this have to do with functions? Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look at what a function is. And what we have over here is the definition of a function, which is basically a special case of relation. And a function is a relation, but it's where each Input determines exactly what output. Exactly what output. So one input, one output. So let's look at an example. Here's one. The amount you spend on milk depends on the number of gallons that you purchase. In other words, the amount you spend on milk is a function of the number of gallons that you purchase. I don't know where that how came from. So for example, let's say um, milk costs $3.50 a gallon. That's how much that one milk of, would cost. Now if we had two gallons of milk, like this, two gallons of milk, clearly the amount you spend on the milk will go up since the, uh, it depends on the number of gallons that you have. So two gallons would cost $7. If I wanted to have three gallons, Clearly, three gallons would be $3.50 plus $3.50 plus $3.50 or $10.50. So this is a function where uh, the uh, amount you spend on the milk is a function of the number of gallons that you par purchase. And just so you know, the input, the input here is um, the number of gallons that you purchase. So this would be the input. In this case, we have three gallons. The output is the amount you spend, the output. So one input, one output. One gallon of milk is 350. Two gallons of milk is $7. Three gallons of milk is 1050. As a quick example, here are two relations. Which one's a function? Notice that in the first relation, you have the number two gives you an output of four, and the input of two, again, gives you an output of negative four, Therefore, in this case, one out input is giving you two outputs. One input is leading to two outputs. Therefore, this is not a function. But if we look at the next example, negative two gives you a four. Zero gives you a zero. Two gives you a four. Each input gives exactly one output. Therefore, this is a function. One input will give you one output. So this is a function. So now let's look at function notation. When way, one way of writing functions is uh, where y is equal to f of x. Let's, let's, in order to understand this, let's write an equation down. We could say that f of x, which is also equal to y, because y represents the output as f of x does, is equal to 2x plus 1. So what we're saying here is that the y is the dependent variable, or and it's the output. And that depends, the value of y depends on what the input is. The x is our independent variable, and this whole thing, uh, will is the is what's called a rule that will determine what y or a function is equal to. So, for example, using this notation, if I said let's find f of three, well, we know the rule is multiply two times x plus one. Well, three we're saying x is three, so it's the rule says multiply the input three times two and add one. Well, that gives you six plus one or 7. I can find f of, it's called f of negative 2. 
once again, functional notation. That means the function depends on the value of x using the rule y equals 2x plus 1. So in this case, we have the rule says multiply our x by 2 and then add 1. Well, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 1 is equal to negative 3, and there's our answer. So once again, a function says one input gives one output. The x value is the dependent variable. The y value is the uh, in independent variable. And uh, this is simply notation that we will be using throughout the rest of the term. So now let's do another example. Let's say I have a function, f of x, and it has a certain rule associated with it. The rule is take x, square it, and multiply by 2, then take and add to that 3 times that value of x, and then add 2. So if we're asking you to find f of 3, it's simply saying substitute 3 everywhere you see an x, so it's 2 times 3 squared, because it says x squared plus 3 times 3, because this 3 is our x, plus 2. Well, 3 squared is 9, so you get 2 times 9 plus 3 times 3. That's plus 2. So it's 2 times 9 is 18. Plus 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2, and we get 29. So, once again, you're simply substituting 3 for the value of x, and then using the rule finding the value of f of x or y. You could have written y out here. Let's do another example. g of x says, the rule says, take the absolute value of x, of x minus 2 and add 4. So, if, g is ne if x is negative 4, we say this function depends on x, which is our negative 4. This is called g of negative 4. So we have the absolute value, and the rule says take negative 4, which is our x, and subtract 2, and then find the absolute value of all that. That comes right from there. And finally, we're going to add 4, and that comes from there. So you have to always look at the rule. Negative 4 and a negative 2 is a negative 6. That's still an absolute value sign, plus 4. We should know that the absolute value of negative 6 is simply... 6, and according to the rule, we're going to add 4, so we get an answer of 10, and 10 is the value of our function, g of negative 4, which also is the same as saying it's our value of our y. Hope that's clear, because now it's your turn. So if you're having any problems with this, please rewind the screencast.